What's up everyone? Let's do a cook with me. Gungi rice and peas and hot chili fried chicken. Let's get started. So today I'll be cooking some authentic gungo rice and peas. So here I have my coconut that I'm breaking apart. You need a heavy object to break your coconut or if you're outside or in Jamaica you want to smash this on a concrete or a stone. So I use my hammer to break mine apart. So here I'll be using a dishcloth to hold my coconut and I'm going to use a knife to run it alongside the edge of the coconut on the inside to remove the coconut from the shell. I use this cloth just in case the knife slip. It doesn't cut me so you want to make sure that you use something to hold your coconut and you want to hold it firm and to remove the coconut from the shell it can be quite hard but if you know what you're doing it's like a piece of cake so here i am removing my coconut from the shell now i'm going to wash these up cut them into small pieces and blend them up and of course feel free to grate if you don't have a blender and if you want to just grate so after i blend my coconut i'm just going to go ahead and strain the pulp from the juice and i'll be straining this i like my coconut milk to be on the richer side so i have a richer taste here gungo rice and peas so i'll be squeezing as much juice as i can from the um the pulp here's my coconut milk nicely ready Today I'll be using the green gungo peas but if you have the dry gungo peas go ahead and use that. So to the pot I'm going to add majority of my coconut milk reserving just a bit for later on and I'm going to go in with some water, some garlic and some pimento seed and I'm going to allow this to cook until nice and tender. Now this took about um, 30 minutes to cook and I went in with some salt. I'm scraping down the custard on the sides and I'm going to give this a mix. Now I'm going to go ahead and season up my pot. So I'm going to go in with some fresh thyme, some scallion and a scotch bonnet pepper and about a tablespoon of sugar. Now the sugar is totally optional. The sugar is not to sweeten the rice and peas. It's just to balance out the flavor i went in with the rest of my coconut milk and i'm going to give it a good stir you want to make sure you taste and adjust to your liking here mine is fine so i'll cover this and allow this to simmer for another five to ten minutes while i wash up my rice so here i'll be using the parboiled rice i do not have a particular brand that I love to use. I use any brand. I use the white, the basmati, the jasmine, whatever. Today I feel like using some parboiled rice. So that's what I'll be using. But feel free to use any rice of your choice. And I will be washing my rice a couple of times. I think I washed this about three to four times. But just make sure to wash your rice, guys. You want to remove all the impurities that maybe lying in your rice because you don't know how this was packaged so make sure to wash your rice all right guys now that my rice is nice and clean i'm just going to go ahead and add it to my pot so i'm just going to go in one more time scrape down the custard um on the sides of the pot and i'm going to add my rice give it a good swirl swish mix whatever you want to call it stir and combine the gungu peas throughout the rice majority of the gungu peas is going to settle on top but we will deal with that later on in the video so you want to give this a good stir or mix and allow this to cook for about 15 to 20 minutes on medium to low heat you want to lower your heat or your rice will burn after 15 to 20 minutes, this is what my gungo peas and rice is looking like. I'm just going to go ahead and fluff it up and incorporate that delicious custard on top throughout the rice. And I'm going to move, remove the little thyme sprigs and yeah, fluff it up. That's basically it. And it's that quick, simple and easy to cook up some delicious gungo rice and peas. I will leave the recipe and the measurements to this down below so you could go ahead and check it out so yeah that's basically it my rice is nice and cooked and yeah you could just eat this just as is you don't even need no meat <laughs> all right on to the next thing so this is how i clean my chicken i'm just gonna go ahead and remove my 
the skin from the chicken as much as possible i won't be removing all i'll be frying the chicken so i'll be leaving the skin on to retain some moisture to the chicken so i'll be removing some of the excess fat and skin but i'll be leaving majority of it on to make sure the chicken is juicy now for my thighs i go in and i trim off those excess fatty pieces that i don't like i go inside the cartilage right there and i remove that piece as i said before clean your chicken to your liking i don't like this in mind so i'll be removing that and i'm gonna you know pick off that little fat right there And as Jamaican would say, I'll be removing the chicken body. Yes. <laughs> and for my chicken legs, I don't like that little yellow thing on my chicken legs. So I will be removing that. And that's basically how I clean my chicken. So I'm just going to continue on removing the excess pieces that I don't want. And I'll show you what I do next. So today I'll be using the white distilled vinegar to clean my chicken. Feel free to use lemon juice if you have that on hand. I have a lot of vinegar, so I'll be using vinegar today. So I'll be washing my chicken thoroughly. I wash and I drain and I wash again. And that's how I clean my chicken. Now I'm going to go ahead and season the chicken. So my season, I have some Cajun seasoned garlic powder, um, seasoned salt, chili powder, cayenne pepper, chicken bouillon, garlic powder, and black pepper. Feel free to use any seasoning blend of your choice. So I'm going to go in with some um, vegetable oil on the chicken to ensure that the powder, the, um, the powdered seasoning stick to the chicken well. Now this might look like a lot of seasoning, but it's a lot of chicken. So I'm just going to go in and season my chicken generously. I'm going to massage this. And allow it to marinate. Now the longer the chicken marinates, the better it gets. If you have overnight time, that would be awesome. I did this in the morning and yeah, I cooked it off in the evening. So if you have overnight time, that would be best. So you want to let it sit and marinate for a bit. Now I have some Cezanne chicken bouillon, Cajun seasoning, garlic powder and onion powder. And to my Ziploc bag, I'm going to go in and add some all-purpose flour. I'm, I'll be using just all-purpose flour today because I want a light um, coating of flour on it. So in with the seasoning, I'm going to give it a, a good shake to incorporate the seasoning throughout the flour. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add a few pieces of chicken to my Ziploc bag and shake it and coat it thoroughly. Now guys, I won't be cooking all this chicken. I always have seasoned chicken on hand. So I season a bunch of chicken all at once and I always have seasoned chicken on hand. So I will be adding the rest to a Ziploc bag for a later date. Now I'm going to shake off the excess flour, place the chicken on a plate and then allow that um, flour to get nice and moist before frying. The reason why I'm letting it sit, we want the flour to kind of get um, soak up and get wet because if we add this chicken to the oil right away, all that flour is going to fall off and the oil is going to get messy and you'd have to strain and start all over again. So you just want to allow the chicken to sit for about 5 to 10 minutes before frying. So here I have a pot of vegetable oil eating up and we don't want the oil too too hot because the chicken will burn on the outside and not cook on the inside. We want to cook this on um, low flames like medium to low like you want the oil to be hot but not too hot about 350 degrees. So we're going to cook each on each side for about 7 to 8 minutes and then flip for another seven to eight minutes. The thicker pieces of chicken take a longer time to cook. So you wanna cook the chicken 
until it's fully cooked and if you don't know what your temperature should be if you have a meat thermometer you want to make sure the chicken temperature has an internal temperature of 160 to 165 degrees now I'm going to remove the chicken from the grease and allow it to sit on a wire rack and drain some of the excess grease Now I'm going to go in with my um, smaller pieces of chicken and I'm just going to allow these to cook until they're fully cooked, nicely golden brown and fully cooked on the inside. Now these are done and I'm going to drain these on a wire rack as well. So in a pan I'm going to go in with some butter. I'm going to allow the butter to melt. Now here's where the sauce get nice and delicious. So I'm going to go in with some sweet chili sauce. Some hot sauce. And some honey. The sauce is that simple and it's super delicious. That's, I'm going to give it a good mix. And I'm going to add some water to this and I'm going to give it a good mix and allow it to simmer down and thicken up for about five to six minutes. Now this is what we want to see. We want to see nicely bubble and little um, little simmers and you know little niceness going on there and you know your sauce is ready. So I'm going to take my chicken pieces and I'm going to coat them generously in that sauce all over the chicken. And I'm going to do these piece by piece until everything is nicely done. I will leave um, the recipe down below so you could go ahead and check it out if you like. And let me tell you, this meal was so good. This sauce is to die for. If you don't try this on a fried chicken, you could try this on some wings, whatever. But guys, you got to make sure you try this sauce. It's really good. Now, all my chicken is nice and coated. And this is what it's looking like. And it tasted amazing. Serve this up with some garden salad, my gunga rice and peas, and of course my chicken. Guys, I thank you so, so much for watching. Remember to like, follow, and share, and subscribe. See you in my next one.